So today I'm going to be doing a little bit of testing with hard drives. So I have two hard drives here, both are 2.5 inch laptop drives. And the closer one here is a Seagate Fire CUDA. This is a basically brand new drive, it's gotten on a Black Friday sale, and they were like 60 bucks on Amazon. This is a HEST branded as Apple. Uh, one tear. So these are the closest to equivalent. I couldn't find a two tear I had laying around for um, 2.5s. I'm not going to use a 3.5 because they do perform a bit differently, but they should perform similar in sequential. I was running some sequential tests on this guy. You get about 120. This one gets about 110. So yeah, it's a bit faster. But the big difference is this guy has a cache, and I think that's 8 gigs in NAND. It's on the other side of this board. It's a single chip. And they claim it can make a system quite a bit faster in booting. And I was running some tests here, and I'll show them on screen of basic boring tests, and nothing stood out. I mean, it was slightly faster in a few tests, and it did do the thing, especially if you're working with small files, it will speed up over time, but it never got to SSD speed. It got, I don't know, it went from about 1600 IOPS to about 2400 with a few runs. So, not great, but a reasonable improvement. But, let's run a few more tests on it now and see how it does it as an actual boot drive. So, for testing today, we are going to be using Fedora 27. We are going to be using this computer here I have laying around as my test bench. So that's a AMD FX8350, 8 gigs of RAM, which will be used to cache the drive in Linux and Windows for that matter too. So we'll see how this actually benefits it, because this will should negate the effects of faster drives. RX480 has a GPU. And that's about it for the test system. We're going to be testing a few different characteristics, such as install time, uh, update time, boot times, application load times. I'm going to try running them a few tests, and we're going to see if we get that much snappier. Because, I mean, the thing is, SSDs are known for snappiness. And the thing is, it's like, you can either buy an SSD, but if you want a 2 terabyte SSD, that's 600 bucks. That's a lot of money. You can buy a boring hard drive, but it's going to be slow. Or you can spend a couple more bucks and get a cash drive. And my curious is, is that couple bucks actually worth it? Is it a lot of marketing, or is it actually a huge difference? So, let's get this guy installing. So, let's take a quick look at the different drives and the different speeds. So, we're going to do the SSHD first, and then we're going to do the HDD. Both systems have been rebooted quite a few times, and fully updated to the newest version of Fedora. Um, and there's not much else to note. Um, so, I was looking at the data a little bit. Um, it doesn't feel that much faster on the SSHD. But then you start looking at like boot times and the SSHD is like half of what the hard drive is or something. Like this boot time here I think is in the 20 second range I want to say, which really isn't bad. Especially for a non-SSD. Now it definitely doesn't feel like an SSD. But it's not an SSD, it's an SSHD. And is it worth the extra 20 bucks? Um, I'm almost tempted to say yes. So, now we're in. Takes a sec to log in. Now we're logged in. It really wasn't too long. Opening up Firefox is roughly about 3-4 seconds. Not bad if I want to open up, let's say, files to look at my files. This isn't bad if I want to view all my applications. It's pretty much instant if I want to, like, maps. It's pretty quick at opening programs. And this is basically standard use. Let's say I want to use software. Um, this will take a couple seconds to look at it, but really not bad. This is quite a bit better than the hard drive at doing the same item. Now let's open a bigger program, like LibreOffice. This is a fairly large program. It's a spreadsheet program. And, uh, it's not bad. It's not, it's definitely not SSD fast, but it's a lot better than most hard drives. Now for a bit more info, uh, here we can look at, um, 3-H, which will show us all the different memory utilization. So we could see right now we have 923 megs of buffers and caches. So this is doing quite a bit of just caching the hard drive. If we let it sit for a little bit, it'll change a little bit, but not too much. The other thing we can look at is DF-H. And what we'll notice pretty quickly is we're using 5 gigs on this hard drive here. Um, we're using 5 gigs on the root drive, and we're using 123 megs on there. And then we have swap, which is... 7 gigs, and since swap is basically not used, since I'm just not using enough RAM, and I'm not using much home on here, basically everything's SSD cached, which makes it a lot faster. So actually noticeably better. Um, you get a lot of hate for these drives, but I'm not really feeling that right now. It's definitely not an SSD, don't expect it to be one, but for booting an OS, I'd easily get this over a standard hard drive. Now if I shut them down, and I'm going to go switch to drives now. 
So here we are booting from the pure hard drive, we're in the grub menu, now we're actually booting it, and this will take a good amount longer. So here I am back booted into the hard drive system, it did take noticeably longer than the SSHD to boot. But, I mean, it's doable. You can also tell like the login time is quite a bit slower, and like everything just feels a bit slower. Opening Firefox takes about 7 seconds on a freshly booted, freshly logged in system. Actually it's taking a bit longer than it normally does right now. And it's open. So that took longer than expected. The other thing um, is if you notice, if I go to like all apps, it'll sometimes take a second to get all the icons and stuff loaded. You can definitely tell this is a slow drive. Whereas you had none of those issues on the SSHD. And the SSHD is definitely not a hard drive, but it's quite a bit faster. <clears throat> and the SSHD definitely is not an SSD, but it does give you capacity and a bit more speed and none of the management. So I guess the other thing to look at now is what are your other solutions? So let's take a quick look at options for drives wise and see kind of how pricing and options look. So this is the hard drive you have and yeah they work fine but they are a bit slower for just opening random programs and stuff on your system and being faster makes it feel a lot more snappy. So the next option is something like this. Costs pretty much the same, 75 bucks, you're paying another $10. It's quite a bit faster. This is a generic, cheaper SSD I picked, but they're all quite a bit faster than any hard drive. But the problem is it's 250 gigs, and many people want more than that. Though, if you don't need the space, just get one of these instead of a hard drive. So you want space, you go get this guy. That's a 2 terabyte SSD, but now we're paying 530 bucks about. Yeah, it depends on the exact drive. So if you want the space out the price, you're looking at these. And this is the SSHD I was doing testing on today, or a similar one. This is a desktop version, which will be a bit faster. These are looking like a pretty good value. You're paying 100 bucks, and you're getting more speed due to the caching. And yeah, it's not going to be as fast as an SSD ever will be, but you do get the space, and it is a good amount faster for booting and normal activities. Now, let's say you want to do kind of do your own more DIY solution, so you don't want to buy the drive with both the SSD and the cache. They want about a 30 to $35 premium for it. You got a couple of solutions. There's no like easy caching solution that works for everyone in every use case. Uh, the best one currently on Linux, there's Bcache and then there's an LVM caching on Linux. Both of these can kind of be a pain to set up depending on your exact system. You kind of have to know what you're doing. Um, at least with Bcache, Grub does not support booting up a Bcache volume, so you have to have a slash, different slash boot volume to load the kernel into, and a couple other things. It's easily doable, but you can, it, it, you have to know what you're doing in Linux. Um, there's no caching in Windows, at least for boot volumes. Um, you can for non-bootable volumes with storage spaces. Um, hardware level, you have stuff like LSI, or I guess Broadcom now, with their cachecade software, which is built into the hardware of a Mega RAID controller, but these things often go for $300 or more dollars and need battery backups and stuff like that. And then you have stuff like Intel's Optane software or their SSD, but you need Intel hardware or at least if Optane fairly reasonable. And if you're looking at the price of a newer SSD, you're paying about 30 bucks for a standard one, and if you want a faster, like an Intel Optane, you're paying roughly... 40 some dollars for 16 or 75 for that. I might test these just to see how much caching is improved for a cheap SSD versus a nicer, um, a much better SSD. Um, but I'm guessing there won't be a huge difference. But all of those will be a pain to set up here and have their own different requirements. And the fact that these are, yes, you do get a smaller cache. Yes, it's not as fast as the cache as any of these drives. But it's a lot easier to plug and play. I'd almost suggest this over a DIY or an Optane caching solution. Especially since you get the space, it's not that expensive. Now you can't upgrade to an SSHD as easily, but they look like a good solution. Though if you need the space, and you don't need the most speed, and you don't want to spend a ton of money, these do look like a good solution. Let's get into the nitty gritty numbers on all the different um, synthetic benchmark tests. So here's the synthetic results using FIO on Linux. Um, from left to right, we have two sequential results, which are slightly faster than SSHD, probably just due to the larger size. And then we have a very intensive random read-write operation, where it's slightly faster. And we get slightly faster operations on these slightly less intensive read-write operations. We get a good amount faster for the um, random read and write of 64k. A good amount slower here. I've tried rerunning all these ones. These are using about 1 
gig files and if you rerun them they get about 20% faster each time up for around 5 times when they stop doing it. Now here I have the boot up test and this is showing the overlay of both systems booting and you can see that the SSHD will take approximately 18 seconds to boot to the login menu while the HDD takes approximately a minute to get into the login menu and this is using um, straight Fedora with all updates and I ran it over multiple times there's a variance of a couple of seconds but it does range through about 20 seconds and about a minute so there's a very large um, change in boot up times so thanks for watching this video and subscribe for more hard drive testing and other computer videos in the future